Okay, hello everyone. Um, I am André Almeida from Igalia, and here is Mathieu from Efficious OS, and we're here to talk about uh, adaptive spin locks in user space using RSAC. So people have been trying to uh, have adaptive spin locks in user space for a long time, and we are trying to solve this uh, again. Uh, basically, the use case behind that is calling a mutex lock, a contained mutex lock. Uh, we eventually call a futex uh, that requires a context switch, and a context switch can be way more expensive than the critical section itself, and so this can create kind of a micro contention. Um, so you're wasting a lot of time going to the kernel instead of uh, getting the, lo the lock. Uh, and because of that, some apps like PostgreS, they have a complete user space lock implementation to avoid any syscalls. Uh, so what we want to do is to allow user space to correctly spin. Uh, and uh, a similar use case is that RT mutexes on the kernel side, they use adaptive spin locks. And this has been proved to be uh, a huge per performance improvement. So, uh, the challenge here is basically how to tell that a user space thread is running or not, because you should only spin if the lock uh, owner is uh, running. And we need we need a way to do that in a very fast way without any syscalls. And that is where our stack comes in. So our stack code is already integrated with the task scheduler and has a fast UAPI. You don't need any syscalls. You can just uh, poke uh, the shared uh, thread, uh, the, shared, uh, the memory of the thread that is shared between the kernel and the user space. So it's just a matter of reading a structure. And in a similar fashion, RSAC was used for GetCPU, and we are seeing a lot of, of new users case for RSAC that uh, uh, of new ways to user space talking to the kernel and ask questions about the task scheduler. So the idea here is to have a new field for RSAC, like a scheduled state field, uh, is updated by the kernel when the process is scheduled out or in. So on that way, you have a field on the user space telling if this thread is running on a CPU or not. So the only thing left for user space is to check this field to ask if the thread is on a CPU or not, and then it can safely spin. Otherwise, it goes to the normal path that is sleeping using Futex. Uh, so this is the proposed, uh, one of the proposed structures. Uh, do you want to? Yeah. Okay. So that. The, the proposed structure, so this is the complex one. The simple one is taking the state in uh, thread ID uh, and move that back right into struct RSEC. So after some discussion with Carlos, so I might go for a simpler uh, layout because, so there's a trade-off there. Either we make things complex like this to have the state information in a separate cache line to eliminate the fact that where if it's shared on the struct RSEC, if we have a, a high contention and we have readers trying to check that state over and over again, then that uh, cache line becomes shared. So if you have a RSEC critical section beginning and wants to store there, that store is slightly more expensive, a few nanoseconds more, right? So, so there's a slight overhead to having this within the same cache line, but to split that into a different cache line brings extra complexity for all user space users like uh, libc for instance where they have to make room and uh, allocate uh, area for this separate sked state so so yeah uh, so so it's a trade-off so there's a slight performance advantage to have an approach like this where in structure sec you have a pointer to a, a separate cache line that has the state but Why you microphone, microphone? microphone? <laughs> so, uh, why don't you blow up the size of struct orsec in yeah. the first place? It's excellent. It's no, no, not why a pointer. Just make it that. Uh, yeah, that it's padding. Right. Two cache lines. So, so the problem is. So, if I would have additional features to add before that, right? I could pack them into my current cache line and then get to the next one to add this other feature. But if I skip immediately to the next cache line, then that space becomes wasted space. No. So. It becomes reserved space. 
it's unused at that point, given point in time, but you can reuse it. Okay, but then I need a new, a new way to expose the fact that the reserved state is not reserved anymore, it's now used. Because, the, so I use auxiliary vectors to, uh, to let the kernel tells you, tell user space how much of the, the area is actually populated. So if I skip with padding, after that I need some mechanism to say, well, this padding is not padding anymore. So either I leave that as padding or I need a new mechanism. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Uh, so that's, uh, do you want to uh, continue? Um, yeah. So another concern is about robustness uh, because this interface requires uh, reading a shared thread information. And so the idea here is that user space will implement something that before the thread dies, it will free the, the lock in the exit path. And we can use the RSAC uh, memory barriers to uh, protect this field before. Uh, so we make sure that when you are reading the SCAD state, you are reading something that is meaningful. Uh, but and then we but we can have these for different process. We can only use these for uh, threads. So the question is, if is this a concern? Um, yeah. So if I can just rephrase. So uh, so one of the things that we we'll, we would need for that is integration with libc, so that libc when it reclaims a uh, some thread memory, uh, it issues a RSEC fence through Membarrier so that wh whatever threads are trying to read that on CPU state uh, from that specific threads memory, uh, it can use a RSEC critical section to do that load so that it gets aborted if the, the memory it wants to read is about to be reclaimed. So that, that's the idea of how to kind of make things work in terms of, uh, of this. And of course, because we need to have access to other threads memory, it only works for private futexes. It does not work for the shared case where we have shared memory, a mutex and shared memory across processes. That's a current limitation, but I mean, there seems to be quite a lot of use cases that would still benefit from that. Uh, there is a question, Thomas? Thomas? So did you talk to the obvious suspects like uh, database people who are so keen about user space spin locks? Um, if they are happy with having it limited to threads, because I know at least one major database which is not, it's process based. So you should talk to them because yeah. they might be rather unhappy. Well, there might be other ways to work around that, but we'd have some way to kind of let threads poke other threads entry. Right. I mean, we want to quickly have the answer of whether the owner thread is on CPU or not. So it needs to sit in memory somewhere in a memory area that is readable directly by the potential log uh, takers. <laughs> And maybe that could be two separate implementations, right? One for the private and one for the non-private. Yeah, I was about to say, maybe you probably, like for the, like uh, for other processes, you probably need a pointer or something to another shared memory or something that would be able, maybe it could be even mapped always from the kernel to user space. It could it have to be set up so you have it mapped so it doesn't get, it's not like uh, RSEC, which I understand, it's just memory and user space. And when kernel wants to, it's got to do like a user, um, Yes. So, so, so it's also a question like, where is the, when is the thing set that it says I'm off the CPU? The right, that's in the scheduler? Yes. So it is set currently uh, when the scheduler is preempting the task. So, uh, but it, so it's, it's a statistical hit, right? The, that store cannot take a page fault. Right. So if, if that page would be, uh, would happen not be, to be fault then, it's not doing anything, the state is wrong until it's uh, going back to user space and then we can take the page fault. Okay. Uh, but if well, that's it's going back to user space, then you're scheduling again. Yes, yes, that's right. But, but then it's faulted in and you need to be really unlucky to have it faulted out again, right? Uh, page out, sorry. Uh, one workaround for this that I thought about but did not implement is if that state is really important to get right 100%, I think we could hook into the page fault handler 
for the reads. So the scheduler cannot update the state, but it can tag the process to say, well, the state for that page is actually currently wrong. So on the next page fault for reads to try to access and read the state, the right information will be populated before the process is allowed yeah. to read the page. So basically, so when the other CPU says read this page, it's going to actually take the fault and it's yeah. going to actually update the yes. status. So we that could actually, work. yeah, and you just have the status since like the task structs yes. like that. Say, or just check, are you on the run queue? Yeah. And then, so yeah. when it faults in, say, okay, yeah. do it that way. I mean, that could, I guess that works. Good. Um, all right. Yeah, we just over this, uh, the correctness slide by accident. Uh, um, overall, I'm curious, what's the, like, the, the performance benefits versus, like, avoiding the context switches versus, like, um, when you're spinning in the kernel, uh, spin on owner, um, you have, like, um, really specific, like, uh, um, MCS locks. Um, so is, there's a trade-off there. Like, have you determined, like, which one is better in some cases, which one is better off, even with the context switch still? using um, better cache lines? I have not worked on any benchmark on this. I mean, I, I, I've seen the LWN article about what you were trying to achieve, uh, to achieve and I was like, I, RSEC can do that. So I did that path. So, so the benchmark part and trying to figure out where it makes sense and everything, I, I leave that to Andre. So care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't did mark uh, okay. already. You were trying to, to figure out the proper design. Yeah, because 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 once you 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 incur in the in the context switch and all the MCS properties, the OSQ lock specifically, um, really boost performance. That's all. I think that would r really be a, an important information to have because if you look at the, the right now, the syscall overhead is mostly that is scheduled out. It's not that you're going into the kernel. I mean, syscalls. 20 years ago have been expensive from the hardware point of view, but it's not longer that horrible. No, they, they, with mitigations on, they are. Yeah, but <laughs> come on, we are not optimizing for PTI affected the machines. No, we don't. It's, it's stupid, really. But give us information about what does it take to get into the, what's the real, the real advantage and does it matter? That's the, that's the main question. I mean, obviously everybody out there who does user space spin logs will tell you, oh, of course it matters because it gains us so much performance. And then if you do real world benchmarks, it turns out to be completely irrelevant. So this is the real question we, we, we want to have because the spinning mechanism itself we have in the kernel. The it's let's theory. people have information about that because their own mutex implementation have some heuristics about how much it needs to spin before going to the kernel. So there's already some mitigations in place to kind of... Yeah, but guess. they're all, all, all wrong. Yes, well, that, 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 that's why we want to provide the right information from the scheduler, let them no, easily do but, the right thing. But Matthew, the main problem is that today's implementation, and I was yelling at people 10 years ago and told them implement spinning in the Futex code and then compare and contrast, because then you can just go into the coil without having heuristics. And we all know that heuristics suck. So, but the kernel has all the information ready and can do the right thing without having to have a page fault handler and a whatever handler and, and magically mapped memory. No, it's all not necessary. So, so, the first so there's metric, a trade-off. Yeah. The first metric we need is the cost of doing the round trip back and forth to the kernel exactly. compared to. Yeah, yeah. So the, the patches I sent out with the extended time uh, scheduler thing that I kind of played with, I just did a test with like a, a benchmark on just measuring like its own little uh, spin locks where I would grab a lock, do something and release, grab a lock and then had some contention on it. And then I switched it to a few texts and said, okay, just let it, if it goes in with the uh, spinning and everything, the drop, the performance dropped tremendously. It, I mean, it was more of a micro benchmark, true, because, but still. Because you, because you scheduled out on the contention. No, wait, on contention, no, I didn't schedule out. Oh, well, yes. Oh, yeah. So, if, if oh, because actually. The kernel with you, it's lost, you schedule out, period. Okay. So. 
unless the other side really is needed in the meantime. Maybe slightly a relevant point, but like whenever talking about overhead, it's always good to be aware of like DBFS impact and like all the power management and like are you accidentally being running slightly faster when you measure the overhead? Uh, which I don't know, like I've seen enough of these overheads sometimes being wrongly attributed, which, which might not be the case over here, but like at least when talking with app developers, they try to optimize and like, like yeah, you are running a little bit slower, that's why, and you need to basically mitigate it differently. Anything else? Put in an action item for myself. I will implement the uh, Futex spinner, like adaptive spinning, and then I'll run the same test to make sure that, and test to make sure it's not actually scheduling. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, I'll add that. that I mean, that, that would be a nice improvement with Futex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have actually implemented uh, some kind of uh, optimistic spinning Futex. Um, before and I sent out a patch, but the problem is uh, there's no um, no user space application changes, so you didn't get um, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I think one of the problems is also we don't know who the owner is. That's don't we, we have to pass. <laughs> All this works only with robust futexes anyway, because you have to know who the owner is. So you have the TID in the Futex field itself, and it's handed in via the, the syscall anyway. So it's low overhead from, a, from a, a, a figuring out who the owner is, and then you can do the lookup in the kernel, and it's, it's all there, it's all existing, it's all existing code. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard to hack up. And I mean, if, if people in, insist on using non-robust Futexes, I can't help them anyway. One minute. Anyone else? Last minute thing? That's all we have. Okay, thank you. Thank you.